Mother Bond for the song and uh, thank you, Mother Faison, for the prayer. At this time, we're going to turn it over to our uh, trustee Wood. Morning, everybody. Our lesson for today. Our lesson for today is from Judges, the sixth chapter, verses one through two, seven through sixteen, and the subject is confidence provides necessary courage. At times, you know, like Gideon, you know, we felt that we were not qualified for what was required of us. So we can identify with him. And it said the people of, uh, of Israel went back to doing evil in God's sight. They began worshiping other gods. And once again, God put them in the hands of Midian for seven years. Now the Midianite was so cruel that Israel had to run to the mountain and find them a place to hide. And they couldn't even couldn't even deal, reap even their own crops after planting. The Midianites just treated them so cruel. And then when, uh, when Israel did plant the crops, the Midianites and the other groups nearby would destroy all their crops, would take all the sheep, oxen, and donkeys, and leaving Israel with nothing to eat. Out of desperation, Israel cried out to God once more, and God, he didn't deliver them right away. He, he sent a prophet. And, and the prophet with a message. He, the prophet told him, said, the Lord God of Israel brought you out of slavery in Egypt, rescued you from the Egyptians and all who was cruel to you, drove out your enemies and gave the land to you. And said, and I told you that I am your God. And you don't need to fear the Amorites. Y'all worship that God. But you didn't listen. And it seems like over and over, Israel just kept falling off the wagon. And one day the angel of the Lord came and, and sat under the oak tree of Oprah. Now, and this was on the farm of Joash. And Joash and his son, this was Gideon's father's property. Gideon was threshing wheat, but he was hid because he knew if the Midianites saw them, they were going to come and take it. So he was kind of hid back there, uh, uh, doing it at the wine press instead of where they normally do, out of sight of the Midianites. And, and the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, God is with you, O mighty man of valor, O mighty warrior. Gideon said, Excuse me? Uh, she said, you know, I, I'm talking to you. The Lord is with you. 
Gideon said, God is with us? Why is all this happening? If God is with us, why is all this happening to us? So whatever, whatever happened about all the miracles our ancestors have told us about, such as when I brought you up out of Egypt. Now the Lord has thrown us away and let the Midianites ruin us. And he says, then he says, then the Lord faced Gideon and said, look, I will, I will make you strong. Go and save Israel from the Midianites. I'm sending you. Well, Gideon thought, can't, that he can't, can't be serious. Just can't be serious, not me. He said, uh, um, he said, how and with what will, could I ever save Israel? Said my family is the poorest in the whole tribe of Manasseh. And I'm the least thought of in the entire family. And then God confirmed his choice. And Gideon called. He tells Gideon, you will defeat the Midianites because I'll be with you. Don't you worry about that and do what I told you. And as we look at this lesson again, once again, you know, it seems like the Israelites just, they could do good for a while. But then they was, the, uh, the scripture said they were so attracted to the uh, gods of the Amorites. These gods, they were attracted to them. But, and it just seems like when they saw all the things that God had brought them to, looked like it wouldn't have been so hard for them to remember from whence they came. Remember who brought them from where? And it just looked like it would have been like that, like they would not have gone back so many times. But they kept they kept going back, and they, they just kept going on back. And, but Gideon was telling uh, David, said, you know, you got the wrong person. I know that Manassas is a, a, a that's the poorest one in the whole tribe of, of, of Manassas. We are the poor. Said I'm the least thought of in the family. I, I'm the little one. But God, when God had decided. You're going to do something. You're going to do it. Regardless of how, what you have to go through. And, and this is what he had done for Gideon. He had already picked out Gideon to do what he wanted him to do. And Gideon saying to himself now, he wants me, he telling me I'm going to defeat these people I'm afraid of. The million nights, they're so cruel to us. I'm already afraid of them. And you're saying I'm going to, I'm going to defeat them. And here he was hiding behind the, the, the uh, wine press of uh, threshing the wheat because they was afraid to be out in the open because if they had, they would have come and got the, the Midianites would have come and destroyed. They destroyed everything they had. And then, and so Gideon was saying to the angels, said, well, if God is for us, why did he, what's wrong with this? What's going on with this? And look what we're going through. Said, uh, how in the world can God be with us? God doesn't put us down. He doesn't put us down. He doesn't deliver us into the hands of the midnight. He don't even care about us no more. But you know, Gideon, he, it's like they could not see what they were doing wrong. And, and he was saying that Gideon was basically blaming God for that predicament. And, uh, but yet his father had an altar on his land built for Baal. His father was an idol worshiper. So I'm saying, and, and you know, Gideon didn't see nothing but the fact that God had let them down. And but he didn't he didn't seem to see that they were they had let God down because they had turned their back on God after all that he had done. And so and, and see this was not the first time that uh, Israel had had a quarrel with the Midianites. Um, they joined the Midianites, joined with the Moabites in an attempt to interfere with Moses, leading the Israelis. But Moses later defeated them. And see, for seven years, the Israel was not at the mercy of the Midianites. They lived decent. But now they fall victim 
to many, many uh, people. They had already defeated them way back. And they turn around and fell victim to them again because of sin. Sin will have you oppressed by the enemy you've already defeated. And even in this situation, there didn't seem to be any indication that, that, that uh, of repentance. They didn't talk about repentance. They just thought, well, why did God let this happen to me? They never looked at sin. And the, the, the situation was, the main problem was uh, that they were in all this stuff. But, but their biggest problem was they counted God out. They, you know, and they worshipped the gods of the Amorites. It seems that everywhere Israel went, when they got to a place, uh, whatever gods they were worshipping, it wasn't long before they were joined in the worship. They, like they just couldn't, uh, couldn't keep going, couldn't keep going right. And so, everywhere they went, the neighbors around there, the gods, were long for Israel had deserted the real God and he was worshiping the gods of whatever country they were near. And, and at that lowest point, they cried out to God. They were expecting God to deliver them, but he didn't. He sent a messenger that told them, he said, you know, a change is about to come. He said, <clears throat> You know why God did this? You remember how God brought you out of Egypt? You remember how the things that God had done for you? Said, but, and he called you to repent. You, you know, why did you leave the God? Why, why did you leave God after all he'd done for you? How could you? You know, if God do all that for us, then he expects us to worship him. To be devoted to him. He said, why are you, why did y'all leave God? But Israel felt like, you know, it was somebody else's fault. And, and that's the way sometimes we are in life. Whatever happens to us, it's always somebody else's fault. And sometimes if we just stop and, and, and get by ourselves and talk with God and, and let God give us some points, and he's going to tell us to go to the mirror for one thing. And he wants us to he wants us to look at our own self. And because he wants our devotion, he said he had no other God before us. And this is what was wrong with Israel. They had abandoned God, but they were looking at, you know, all these other gods. And it's, you know, it really is something to make you think about what did they see about these gods? The gods couldn't talk to them. The gods couldn't bless them. There was nothing to that it looks like from my standpoint, what I read, there was nothing that could have helped them. So why were you messing around with these God? And it'd been different if you never knew the real God. But see, God had delivered them out of so much trouble from time to time. God had delivered them and it made you wonder, how, how could you forget such stuff? How could you forget that? All the times he delivered you and he told you he had no other God before you. But yet you turned that around as soon as you got in the land, even in the promised land. As soon as you got settled down, you started looking at the gods that they worship. And so it, it makes you wonder sometimes, you know, God keeps blessing us. He has really done blessed us wonderfully. Now, he expects us to be devoted to him and worship him and him only. He don't expect us to have other gods. And that's one of the things we have to be careful. And sometimes as believers, like I said, we cry out to God for deliverance, but we're reminded of our need for repentance. And so we, we, we know when we are wrong. We know when we are wrong, but sometimes we just don't want to admit that we are wrong. We want to say it's somebody else's fault. And, you know, if it hadn't been for so-and-so, I would have done this. Or had it not been for this, that, now, but first thing you got to do, you got to get right to sin. You got to look within self and say, well, did I contribute to my downfall? And this is what Israel, 
just for the kids to do. They just kept thinking, you know, why in the world God meant to deliver us over to the hands of the midnight? Them folks are mean and cruel, and we we out here we about to starve. They taking everything away from us. What's going to happen to us? And so that's when they cried out to God. And if probably if things hadn't got that bad, they might never have cried out to God. But if they had God had delivered them time after time, this was the uh, uh, Gideon was going to be the fifth judge, and they had all delivered him. The other four had delivered them out of this thing and that thing. It looked like that would have been a sign to them. And it's the same with us today. God has really blessed a lot of us. We are all of us. He has blessed all of us. And yet, somehow or another, we act just like we're going to carry on any kind of way. That is not what he wants. He blessed us so we can be a blessing to others. And, and if you don't, you know, and, and if you're not careful, you'll fall into some of the same traps like Israel fell into, the people around you sometimes. You've got to have your own, you got to have your, your own pathway to God, your own intimate relationship with God. you got to be to a point where, you know, no matter what's going on around me, as Joshua said, for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So no matter what. And then, then, you know, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Now the heart reveals whether one can be trusted. And if they are willing vessels. And it seems like all throughout a lot of the last few lessons we have, God has got somebody that man would think is a nobody. Coming from the wrong side of the tracks, as they say, and all that. But God knew the heart. He knew what they could become. You see, uh, uh, Gideon was, he was so worried that his, um, that he was not qualified. He shouldn't have been there. They should be somebody else. Kind of like Moses did when God called him. And he would say, you know, Lord, I, I, I know I can't do it. And God is telling him, you know, you're going to defeat the Midianites because I'm going to be with you. And I'm telling you, if I'm going with you, victory is going to be yours. And, and Gideon was so afraid of him. And, you know, he was hiding behind a wine press, dressing wheat. And, you know, he is full of fear. But God saw past his presence and spoke to his future. And that's what he does for us. He has something in mind for us to do. He sees past our, our present and speaks to our future. Because when he decided that one of us, he's going to, uh, one of us is going to do a certain thing to him, he, he selects us and then he goes about getting us right for the position. You remember when Joseph, uh, how they, all the things he went through. I mean, you would have thought his brothers wanted someone to kill him, and they put him in a pit, and all of a sudden, you know the story. Then when he got down there with Pharaoh, and he started getting a little promotion, and things started getting better for him, but uh -uh, he still he ended up in prison. And then the person who promised to, to sell words for him they forgot him once they got out. So it looked like there was, I know there was many dark days that that uh, he that he didn't, he wondered if things were going to change. And you see, this is the way that we got a lot of dark days. God is calling all of us for something, but sometimes we don't know exactly what he's calling for, and, and sometimes we might know. But that is a, it's a journey, and it takes time. And when he's going to give you a position or give you something, you don't just move from, from A to B just like that. No, you go A, you go A1, A2, and all that, because you're going to go through some trial. Joseph just kept going through trial after trial before he got that final promotion. So God has your hands on you, and he's got something for you to do. But, you you know, the path ain't going to be easy because you got to be tested. you got to be tried. And Gideon was, you know, God spoke his presence. God saw Gideon's presence, and then he spoke his future. And, you know, God specialized in using those people that, that the world feels is weak, 
for you know you're too weak to accomplish what God has them to do. And you and sometimes people say, Well, you know, this one and this one or that one has done this. You say, What what then? And you thought they weren't gonna be nothing. But see, God looks at the heart. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what, you know, what God has in mind, and we don't know who God's gonna call to do what. So when when someone, when God calls someone, most of them are not qualified anyway. He just to get them from wherever, from a low state of life. Maybe they're a shepherd or a farmer or whatever. But God, yes, and God qualifies. And so sometimes when we don't know what's going on, we look at different people and it looks like to me that you say, well, I remember when they were this, that, and other. But God spoke to that person. God is bringing them. He got a job for them to do. He's already selected who he wants. Then he got a job for them to do. But he'll take them through some things that sometimes they're probably wondering, Lord, is this what you call me to do? Well, if this is what you call me to do, how come I can't do it? But God will take you slowly through the valley, through all of these on some high hills. He'll take you through a lot of things before you get to where he, he really wants you to be. And, you know, he calls Gideon a mighty man of valor. And, and he called to defeat the very people he feared. He was a, they were terrified of the people because they were so cruel. But these are the ones that God said, I want you to, you're going to defeat. And Gideon thought, me? No, not me. I'm on the wrong side of the track. You better pick somebody up there. But see, with God, there's no wrong side of the track. Everybody's on the right side of the track. So we all belong to God. And, the, you know, and the angel, when the angel first talked to Gideon, you know, he was, like I said, he said, well, if God is, is with us today, why is that all this happening? What about these circumstances, why is all this suffering? And, and, and you know, but you know, God is always present in our suffering. And He has a plan for our deliverance. And sometimes we just don't, I, we know we, we know that we believe in God. But sometimes we get a little shaky. So many things come at you at one time. And, and it kind of makes you like, Lord, how can I handle this? What do I do about this? And sometimes God is saying, just get quiet. Just get quiet and concentrate on me and let me handle it. And then sometimes he, he may tell us something to do. He may tell us someone to talk to. But God always got a plan, even when we're suffering. And we don't know what to do. He has a plan for us. So we don't know what God has in mind for us. We don't never know when God wants to use us. So, you know, we have to get prepared. We have to be prepared. Be sitting on altar. Be ready. Because we don't know when God wants to call us to do something for him. Do, to do a job for him. We don't know what he has in mind. So we can say, Lord, uh, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And then we know that when we do that, and like Philippians 13 said, you know, we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the God, we know he's going to supply all our needs. But what we need, he's going to supply according to his riches and glory. And his riches and glory is just numerous. So, you know, there's no, there's no end to that. And he said, he's going to supply our needs and and we can do all things through him. So, you know, uh, we can have the faith and the confidence to move forward. Because once we get it together, once we get with, with God, once we get our relationship to stuff straight out with God, we know we're going to stumble, we know we're going to fall. But we ask God to create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit. So that when we do, if we do kind of fall off a little bit, God, we know how to come to God. 
See, sometimes you get so far out, you keep going and keep going until you don't know how to, how to get back to God. But God sees you just like you saw Gideon. The Midianites didn't know Gideon was over there threshing people, but God did. God knew exactly what he was doing, where he was, and what he was hiding. Just like he knows about it. He knows it all. There is a God that knows it all. And we need to we need to concentrate on our just say do a self-examination sometimes and say, Lord, where am I? Okay, where am I? Just like you go to the doctor and you get your checkup. Ask, go to the Lord and get your checkup. Because so many times things ain't what you thought they were. It's and sometimes you are not where you thought you were. Because sometimes when things like that happen, you find yourself backing up, backing up, and it's like you can't handle it. But if you stay with God, there are going to be some times when it seems like what you are saying or what he is leading you to do just don't make no sense. But it ain't supposed to make sense to you. God is doing it. And, and when God is doing it, it's right. I don't care what it is. So you, we have to, first of all, we have to want to do what God, we don't have to want to be to work for God. We need to want to be one of his children. And so when we do that, we do, a, we do an examination of self and say, you know, you know that since you come to Christ, you can look in the mirror sometimes, and sometimes you just won't know anything about it. The more you stay with the Lord, the more you see your own faults. Because before you came to Christ, you were, you saw everybody's fault. Those people in church ain't nothing but hypocrites. They just didn't help. But when you came to Christ, then you saw yourself as one of those people you're talking about. The closer you get to the Lord, the more you see your own self. That's why it's so important to ask God to create, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Because we ain't going to do right if we don't have those two things. So when we, when God does that, we have our relationship with God, and then we can move forward. Because then you can have this confidence. And when you get the confidence in the Lord, that'll build up your courage. So when God say, I'm calling you to go this place or go that place. You know, you say, well, Lord, I'm going on in your name. The song that is saying that if I die on the battlefield, I'm out here on your word. So, yeah. so, so when you end out there on God's word, you don't, you don't worry about it. Once you, once you come to him and once you give it to him, you just leave it alone. Because whatever happened to you, God got it. God got your back, your front and all. So you don't have to worry about that. And, and since you come to Christ and you mean business, now, now you know, you can't even throw hash that because God knows your heart now. You can hash that and walk through. He knows your heart. But yeah. when, when you're sincere about it, and sometimes you make mistakes you don't mean to, but when you are sincere, it's a whole new ball game. Because, and God said, every, that song said, you can take everything to God in prayer. So, so that's what we that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna ask God to keep us. We're gonna ask God to create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit. Because we we need all of that. That's our beginning. And then we start to walk it daily with the Lord. Some days you walk two steps up, maybe three back, but you keep right on walking. You just get up and keep walking. Because every day ain't gonna be a day of sunshine. There's going to be some rain, there's going to be some storm, and sometimes tornadoes and hurricanes. But we keep walking. And then whatever happens to us, once we become, once we belong to the Lord, He's the one responsible for what happens to us. We no longer have that. He's responsible for everything. And so we don't have to worry about that. But thanks be to God that when we do fall down, we have some place we can we can call on God. We won't be like Israel and Israel do good for a few years and then they go, they get tangled up again. No, we don't want to get tangled up again. And once we get free, we don't want to get tangled up again. Only God can keep us going.
And that is all we have today. It's just Jesus. Are there any comments? Thank you.
I look for us as a church body to just, um, you know, treat people right. And I think with our, our messages going out, that our people are following us. And we just continue to do what we do. And I just thank you for all that you do in our entire church for supporting me in what I do. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? If not, this concludes our Sunday school lesson. Amen. 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 Okay, we want to thank you, uh, Sister Lewis, for sitting in this morning. You are here to read of the minute. Are there any corrections? If not, we're going to receive the minute as given. At this time, we're going to stand and close out with the word, Amen. Amen. Amen.
and to sing and praise thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every day. It's a good thing to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a good thing to praise Him in the morning. In the afternoon, at night, it's a good thing to pray to the Lord. It is that if you go read the, the whole song, it's a bit strange instrument and, and crump and all that. You talk about how good God has been to it. And it's, a, it's a good thing. You may not know how to play those strange instruments. may not even know how to play those keyboards. may not even be, be, be like me can't sing. But the Bible says, the writer says, it's a good thing. To give praise. And that's what we come to more. That's what we come today. To give God praise. Yeah. It is a good thing. When I saw that, I said, oh my goodness. And many times I read I missed that verse. But it's, it's a good thing. And, 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 and you hear me say a lot of times, I get the more first thing, Lord, I think. It's just a good thing. It's like putting money in the bank. Saving myself for a rainy day. Just in case I forgot, it's a good thing to give God praise. And I don't know about you. I look and I look around and see what God had done. Try to get you warm up so, and see how God had blessed all of us. The thing is, some of us have been sick and some of us are still sick. But yet God still delivered us. And I, I, I know really, uh, I can't remember what song was the other day. He said, His mercy endure forever. I don't care whatever I've been through, what you're going through. We don't care what the country is going through, but God's mercy still endure forever. God might be broke, but get what? His mercy still endure. Might be sick, but His mercy still endure. Might not can't see my way, but His mercy still endure. At the Sunday school lesson, talking about how Israel had failed mm -hmm. time after time after time. But guess what? His mercy still endured forever. And I'm glad. So you go back to the song and say, Oh, how it's it, it good to praise the Lord. Why is it good? Because of His mercy and His grace. It's good to give Him praise. Amen. So I ask you to, I devote to serve open the morning. I ask that you may, you might have a prayer, you might have a song, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart, but no way to say it is good. Not just to be here, but just good to praise the Lord, to give him praise. Amen. 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 Y'all want to make me sing or something this morning? No, no. <laughs> I will. I hope nobody don't say nothing now. I want to testify and thank the good Lord for having me arrive this morning. I just thank him, thank him. And it's so good to be able to say thank you, Jesus. Yes. Praise your holy name. And I just thank him for being my all and my peace, my joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Mother. Praise that be enough. Yeah. I got a testimony. I like to thank God for having me all of us up this morning. Let us be a day that we have never, never. ever seen. Never before. seen. And I thank God because some people ain't able to see me. Some mm -hmm. people ain't able to wake up and give him the highest praise. And I just like to thank Lord when when you go through stuff, you got people to help you out. He always and I love to say this. God always got a ram in the bush. Yeah, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, there are times when you hear stuff, you know it ain't right. I like to speak on it myself. So I just want to give God all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Yes, not just for me, but for my family and for my yes. church members and Christ. Because without him, we wouldn't be nowhere. If he didn't Amen. decide to say go on that cross, yeah. and didn't question why somebody put him there, we wouldn't be here today. So I just want to thank God that I go here, I get fed, I go other places, I get fed, and I just want to thank God. I'm not where I need to be, 
I'm not where I should be. But yesterday's service taught me I need to put on my running shoes and run. Amen. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put on my running shoes and I'm going to run this race. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. We got time. Sometimes we have to be caught, have a gang clean to our door. We don't worry about it. But let me tell you, if they are your neighbors, they are where you know them or not, they are your neighbors. Yeah. Not only you claim to enjoy, but you claim to offer a prayer too. Yeah. Nobody says anything. So sometimes when I get to talk, I love to talk about the Lord. Yeah, but the first thing is, it's a good thing. To pray, Lord. Sometimes I, I said, I said to them, you talk too much. Sometimes maybe you like, but you know what? Man, I get talking about the Lord sometimes. Just and not like some people can run, jump, and shout. But I love the Lord with all my heart. Yeah. And, and the thing is about, it, and we can get Him praise. And and, and sometimes we get too quiet on the Lord. Yeah. I, I met with y'all last week at the in Redskin thing and. Uh, and Doug fan, I don't even like football. <laughs> Matt be the only one that don't like football. I don't care nothing about football. Jesus is my fan. He ain't never lost. He ain't never lost a game. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I said. I, I like baseball, but sometimes they get some in there. But I love the Lord. When we come here, this is my this is my sport arena. Come to church. We come in and pray. We come in and lift up His holy name. Amen. 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 Yeah. So good to be with you. So good. So good to be with you. So good to be here. Am I mighty good to be here? So good to be here. So good to be here. So good to be here. It's mighty, mighty good to be here. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for being here. I thank the Lord. I 
thank the Lord for being here. I thank the Lord for being here. It's mighty, mighty good to be here. It's so good to be here. It's so good to be here. It's so good to be here. It's mighty, mighty good to be here. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad to be here? Aren't you glad to be here? Aren't you glad? To be here, it might be good to be here. So good to be here. So good to be here. So good to be here. It might be good to be. So good to be here. Come on, y'all. Let's stand. Help us sing this song. So good. 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 To be here, it's so good to be here. It's mighty, mighty good to be here. I thank you, Lord, for being here. I thank you, Lord, for being here. I thank you, Lord, for being here. It's mighty, mighty good to be here. Amen, 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 amen. She might tell y'all something, something. It's mighty good. It's mighty good. You can't get up with me. Amen. It's mighty, mighty good to be here. It's good. 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 It's
Amen. 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 Is that better than us? I do give honor to my Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. It is good to be alive. Amen. Because we, as we realize that it could have been another way this morning. But God, grace and mercy allowed all of us to wake up and to stay and we were able to get up from our, from our own form. We were just able to do things for ourselves. And truly, I just thank God for what he was doing in my life. I thank him for what he's doing for each and every one of you. Because God has been good to all of us. And how do I know? Because we are here today. Amen. Amen. I do feel honored to my father, Pastor Lewis, to each and every one in the house. I forgot to say in the beginning, Pastor, but God has been good. Amen. And I just thank each and every one of y'all. Continue praying for me. And I'll pray for y'all to miss my time. And before I said that, I do have to share this. Um, uh, other week, my daughter had to go to the football game. And I told her to drink it. I said, look, you're only 12 years old. I don't want to see you by, by yourself. So she told me, so, well, Papa, I did nothing happen before. I said, no, it didn't. I thank God that it didn't. But uh, uh, last week, Saturday Friday night, I said, well, I'm going to go with y'all. And they did have a shooting on the outside of there. But, like I said, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that no one did hurt tonight. But, you know, we just be living in a time now. Thank you to us, but it's not me to the Lord. Amen. Right, so continue praying for me. Continue praying for you. For those who don't even know Christ. We as believers, let us help them along the way. Amen. But they need help, so do us. Amen. 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 I, I wouldn't stop with anyone. I tell you something I noticed this morning. I ain't seen no program, so who worried about it? Let the spirit have the way. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you program the Lord completely out of the church. We can already have our agenda. We walk in the yeah, at ten fifteen, they can make that come and start devotion. So y'all might have to be glad we sat down, but it, I, I, it, it all depends on what the spirit said. The yeah, department guy, he can be up start preaching by a boy. I love him. Glad we go ahead and do that. Little program. Let the let the spirit have it away. We said that. I tell people all that. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's spirit happy. Is there anybody else for the pastor? Amen. Okay, I'm going to cut no pastor. God has been good to all of us. And, and, and Sister Bailey said she fell yesterday. She put on her run shoe on. She got to run. And she already run. She got to run some more. Whatever well, spirit like her do, she got to run some. And that, this spirit we need program too much. Uh, uh, Sometimes, you know, I'm, I, I know, I know, y'all might want me to sit down. She have program here. Yeah, I don't have to get to do nothing in the morning time, but I sit the alarm clock. <laughs> I'm saying, then when I go out, why I sit that clock for? Just be doing something. Wake up when the spirit wake me up. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Thank God again for another day. The Lord has blessed and kept us. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Amen. 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 Uh, this is this day. It's good to be alive. Amen. It's good to be here. It's good to be alive. Right. It's good to be here. It's good to be alive. And what a joy and a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. God has allowed us to assemble here this morning. And we ought to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Yeah. And we just thank him for that. Amen. As uh, Deacon May has uh, stated, we don't have a printed program this morning, but we we know we know where we where we are this morning. And this is you Sunday. This is you Sunday. And uh we I'll I'll yield to the one of the youth advisors that they will uh I guess they have somebody in line for the announcements. And uh, they will come with the announcements of this morning. She may be giving the announcements herself, but I'm uh, sure she has someone. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Okay, so uh, Jamie is going to read the announcements. I had the uh, bulletin from last Sunday. Oh, wow. Let's go. 
guys are really funny. Yeah. We'll use this as part for the week. This is from last Sunday, but God is good all the time, honey. So just read it, okay? That we can get to, okay? baby doll right here in Jakaya. We're going to say the welcome. We're going to welcome everybody to church, okay? Okay, so take your mask off and let's go and say something. What you want to tell everybody? Welcome into the house of the Lord. Say it with me. Say welcome. Mm-hmm. So welcome into the house of the Lord. Amen. And may God be with you. We, she getting there, baby. She getting there, all right? Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you, Sister Bailey, for working with us. Youth, and this is our training ground. Amen. This is training ground. And y'all, each one of you remember. Uh, some of you have to uh, think back a little further than some, but you think back when you when you were that age and how your response was. And be reminded that God has brought us a mighty long way. Uh, just a couple of a couple of things to uh, just remind you that uh, early voting has started. Uh, for our general election in November, November the 8th. So the uh, voting, the one-stop voting ends on the 11th, 11-5. So November the 5th, one-stop voting will end. And there is some information here on where you can go to vote in the hours. And please, if you need this information, please uh, see us and be on the podium there. And hopefully it'll be on the bulletin board. Also, please be reminded that uh, the information is still available for uh, our uh, business meeting for uh, next month. 
the issue that we were uh, debating about that we want to discuss during our next business meeting. Please, please see us, Sister Trustee Pitt, uh, if you have not received the proposal so that we may have the information and be prepared to act upon uh, the recommendation on our next business meeting, which will be uh, Friday before the first Sunday in November. Amen. 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 Um, also, we thank you, God, for each of you, for how the Lord has blessed and kept us and brought us a mighty long way. On this coming Tuesday, we will have our community information and prayer group call our mission list today because we will have, uh, we have lined up uh, a special uh, presentation from the Sheriff's Department on this coming Tuesday, if all goes well. So please join us for our community information and prayer group call. Uh, if you have Zoom access, uh, the Zoom may be the best uh, uh, view for this demonstration. And uh, there are some other things that we would like to discuss during this community information prayer group call. If you don't have Zoom, do uh, still join in on pre-conference call because it will be informative. Amen. Continue to pray one for another. Uh, pray for, for, for me. I know uh, Anderson Chapel is not part of Bear Creek, but uh, we solicit your prayers because uh, I think I mentioned some time ago, the moderator had asked me to fulfill the first one in Bear Creek, and it was confirmed during the uh, annual session. I am now officially the director of the Congress of Christian Education, so I need your prayers and your support that the Lord will lead us and guide us in providing uh, uh, the needed education, Christian education, for not only the association, but those surrounding churches and communities, that we will grow strong in the Lord, uh, because I can't do it by myself. I need, I need the support of the pastors, the members, I need the prayers of the pastors and the members, and I need... Uh, <coughs> The, I need the, the Lord to lead me and guide me every step of the way. So I just thank you for all that you have done thus far and continue to pray one for another. There are so many things that we could uh, discuss uh, this morning and a lot happening in the world. There's a lot happening in the world. And, uh, and we need to seek God for his leading, his, his leading and guidance. One other thing also, there are sample ballots, ballots for um, uh, the election, and they are on the podium there. If you would like to grab a sample ballot, you can grab one to see who is running and what office, and uh, we do encourage you to grab one of the sample ballots. Uh, the one I have here in my hand is for Edgecombe County. I have not looked to see if all of them for Edgecombe County, but those are for Edgecombe County. Again, we thank God for his grace and mercy. At this time, we are delighted to have this choir. Amen. 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 This is the third Sunday in October, and uh, pre-COVID, the third Sunday in October, we recognize this as the choir anniversary. Uh, shortly within the, the program this morning, we are going to give uh, them opportunity to recognize their choir members, but until that point in time, we are going to proceed forward. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let's rise to our feast. The choir shall give us our opening song.
again that we come this morning and say thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you for another day that you have blessed us with, with this glorious opportunity that you have allowed us to come into the house of worship. Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for, for just, just blessing us, dear Lord, with good health, a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you, dear Lord, for the food we eat, the clothes we wear. We thank you, dear Lord, for the home we live in, the vehicles we drive. We thank you, Lord, for thou Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary's cross for a set for wretch like me. Now, Lord, Father, we pray, dear Lord, that I would just touch this service this morning. Father, that everything that shall be said or done would be for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. Touch this choir, dear Lord. Touch our youth, dear Lord, that are standing at the door. Touch those, dear Lord, that shall read the scripture, those that shall pray. Father God, that everything work faithfully together, dear Lord. Father God, that as we leave from this place, dear Lord, we may go proclaiming the word of God. And somebody must say that I love on the name of Jesus. So, Father, we just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
Let's keep writing. I will be reading Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people, for his merciful kindness and greatness towards us and the truth of the Lord and do it forever. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I do give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for what he has done and what he will continue to do. I stand before you this morning to recognize the choir. You know, we haven't uh, had a choir anniversary since uh, 2019, so um, I don't um, know the date or time when we will start that having choir anniversary. But, you know, at this moment, I am soliciting choir members who ever want to join the choir. You're also welcome to do so. But I do want to thank you all for your support, your um, for everything you all do for us. And we are very glad to come for you on uh, first and third uh, Sundays to sing for you all. I truly enjoy it. But, you know, I'm not always on key or whatever. But it's what I do for the Lord, and I try to do my best when I can. You know? And I, um, I can't quite remember what our anniversary year is. But I do know that our church has been here a hundred and some years. So I know that we've been here probably a hundred years at least. Yeah. So we do want to thank everybody. And uh, I do want to um, uh, um, announce our members at this time. Right now we have um, um, Sister Shirley Woodard. Please yeah. stand, Shirley. She's looking real pretty. <laughs> we have Deacon David Reese. He used to be our president. And we have our piano player, Brother Robert Rinsey. We have myself, Sister Olivia Edwards. And in absence, our president, Mother Martha Johnson. And we also would like to recognize um, Sister Connie Puritan and Sister um, Christine Jones. They were they were the last to um, be up here with us, and um, they were really uh, really miss them. We really do miss them since they are here, and all the rest of them. Cause you know we used to have a big choir here, and we we're looking forward to it again. It ain't over till it's over. <laughs> so we need some more people to come. And just wanted to stand before you all and let you all know we thank you for what you've done. And this is this um, uh, uh, Sunday that we will be having our choir anniversary. So since we don't have it, y'all stand up and say applause for us. With <laughs> 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 all that said, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
his leg. But I do know one thing. Deacon Knight has this way. Where you say, I didn't want to bother you, Pastor. <laughs> Mother Dupree tell him that's not a bother. We need to be in prayer for you. Amen. We support and encourage. Amen. He's got a church family that stands with him. Ready to support and encourage. Amen. 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 We Immediately after service this morning, at the conclusion of this service, we will have baptism. Uh, so those of you that are able, please stay and join in with us as uh, we shall baptize this morning. Amen. Uh, and uh, the choir is going to give us selection of their choice. And as the choir is uh, singing, if you'd like to, you may turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. Second chapter. Come on, boy. <laughs> Thank you. 
your sins and would be baptized. Yeah, yeah. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you, my father's children. What a joy and privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. And one more time, another day that the Lord has blessed and kept us. And yeah. I'm so glad about it. It's yeah. good to be here. Amen. It's good to be alive. Yeah. It's good to be able to wave your hand. Yeah. It's good to be able to stand on your own two feet. Yeah. It's good to be able to stomp your feet. Yeah. And it's good to be able to say, Hallelujah! Yeah. Thank God for saving me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, the world wants to get quiet about mm. Jesus Christ. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they try to hush you about Jesus Christ. Yeah. They have taken and tried to take them out of the school. Yeah. Don't want them in the courthouse. Don't want them in the government building. Yeah. But everything else yeah. is all right. Yeah. But you know what? We who are redeemed, yeah. we who have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, yeah. every now and then, when they try to hush us up, We've got to make a note. we got to let them know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? You know, you can, you, can, you can believe in what you want to believe in. But I know in who I believe in. And I've got to tell it to the day I die. Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. Those of you with your Bibles for the book of Acts, chapter 2. The 36th verse. And it reads, Therefore let the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified. Both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brothers, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Just sing a little bit of this song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the rest like me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a rest. I
happy this morning as the Lord will allow for the subject of what shall I do? What shall I do? The question that's asked in the 37th verse there is asked in a corporate question. What shall we do? But in asking what shall we do, that also includes, starts with the question of what shall I do? Because if we're going to do it, I've got to do it. I've got to be a part. I've got to be on the start. So what shall I do? This scripture this morning, the chapter Two opens and it foretells and travels through the day of Pentecost when they was all gathered together in one accord in one place. And that's an important thing when the church of God comes together in one accord. We could be in one place, but if we're not in one accord, it's hard for something to happen. Amen. But when we get together, when we get on one accord, right. when we let God have control, there's no telling what may take place. We can find ourselves even loving our enemy. But in the day of Pentecost, they heard their one another. They heard strangers talking in their own language. God is able to bring Peace in a chaotic situation. God is able to make the sea stop roaring. God is able to do just what he feels. We are not able to do that. You know, sometimes we wake up in the morning. We want to get out of bed, but, you know, the bones, they just don't move like they used to move. We have to take a little extra time to get out of bed. But praise God, we're able to get out of bed. You know, we want to, we want our children to behave themselves. And sometimes they get a little unruly. And we, but we thank God for our children. We thank God for all that we go through because we know that God is able to do just what none other can do. And we've got to hold on and wait on the Lord. We've got to wait for the Lord to do just what he said that he would do. We've got to wait on the Lord because if he promised it, that is what he would do. The children, the apostles, they had gathered together and they were waiting on the movement of the Lord. And when the Lord came in, they began to speak in what some refer to as tongues. But the scriptures say that they heard every man in their own tongue. What the Spirit did, the Spirit gave understanding out of a chaotic situation. And they were there and there was those that was not on one accord. Those that could not understand. They was looking and they said that these men, they're drunk. Peter had to remind them it's early in the day. It's not that time of the day or the hour where reasonable people will be given too much drink. And Peter began to expound upon them about the word of God began to remind them of this man called Jesus. Took them down through the prophets and all how God had sent Jesus to redeem man from his sin. Told them as you pick up here in the 37th verse. In the 36th verse it says uh, he told therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly 
that God has made this same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. The same stone that the builder had rejected, God has set in the forefront. Church of a living God, I'm so glad to know this morning that God is able to elevate us when others try to squash us down. God is able to pull us just where he wants us to be. It doesn't matter what your past may have been. It doesn't matter what you have done. Other people may look at you. They may talk about you. But you now need to know what does God say about you. I'm so glad that God has looked beyond my fault. Because history alone would suggest that I don't stand here this morning. History alone would suggest that maybe someone justice has cried out for, for my blood. But God has been good to me. A smile on my face. A bounce of a step. When I think about what he's brought me through. Where he's brought me from. And I've heard people talk. I've heard people talk about where the Lord has brought them from. And some he has brought them further than he brought me. And if that's not an opportunity to give God the glory and the praise, yes. a sinner and a wretch undone, the scripture here says that Peter was telling them that they had crucified mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. They crucified him, but he died because of us. Yes. He died for us. Yes. And when we think about that fact, we ought to be willing to tell somebody of the goodness of Jesus Christ. We ought to be ready to tell somebody that the Lord has brought us a mighty long way. As they began, as they preached the gospel to them, as they began to tell them of all that Jesus had done, when these men, they heard Peter, Peter said all that he had said. When they heard him, they was pricked in their heart. They were moved with the compassion. They began to understand that God has done something for them. And they wanted to know what should be their response. Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? Church of a living God, when you hear the word of God. When you stand in the presence of God. Not looking at your brother. Not looking at your sister. But looking at what Christ has done for you. And looking at where you stand. You've got to ask yourself the question. What shall I be? What shall my response be? For all that the Lord has done for me. Look at Saul. When Saul was on the road to Damascus. And when Jesus came before him. When he came before Jesus. And Saul fell down to the earth. Paul, Paul's eyes was open. His, he, he, his, he saw no man. And they laid him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. Paul asked the question, what shall I do? And Jesus told him to go down to the certain city and that you'll find a man and he will tell you what to do. Church of a living God, and you know, we have to have a response when Jesus comes into before us. When he comes into our lives, when we hear the word of God, we need to have an appropriate response. Well, Peter told him, say, what you need to do is repent. You know, this is something that many of us, we don't want to do. Namely, because some of us think that we haven't done anything wrong. We think that we all that we do is right and everybody else is wrong. But I need to remind you this morning, no matter how holy you think you are, there's always opportunity for you to repent. There's always opportunity for you to say, Lord, I need you. I can't do it without you. You need to realize that we need to repent and be baptized yes. in the name of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Everyone yes. needs to repent. Yes. Now baptism yes. and 
we're going to baptize here in a few minutes. Yeah. Baptize, baptism does not God does not save you. Yeah. Yeah. Baptism alone does not save you. Yeah. Baptism is just an outlet right. yeah. expression yeah. Yeah. of your acceptance mm. of Jesus Christ yeah. as Lord yeah. and yeah. Savior. Right. Repentance yeah. Yeah. is your acknowledgement. Yeah. Lord, I need you. I want to tell you something this morning. Something that we don't we don't talk a lot about in the church anymore because but it, it's real. Hell is real. Hell is real. And hell somebody said, What you living right here on earth? No, you're going through something right here on earth. But it ain't hell. It's not it's not the torment that's prepared for those. See, hell. We like to think children, sometimes they like to think that hell is the place where bad people go. And heaven is the place where good people go. But watch out, Elijah. Good people go to hell. Watch out, Brown. Bad people go to hell. Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about, Christian? That's 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 bad. That's bad. Bad people go to hell. Good people go to hell. Those who have repented and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they're the ones that go to hell. Yeah. They once was bad. But they have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. He has cleansed them. They are good who would never accept him. Hell is where those who refail to repent. Watch this. David said, where can I go that I can escape my Lord, my God, but make my bed in heaven? He's there. If I make my bed in hell, he's there. Now watch this. If you make your bed in hell, then he's there. God is everywhere. But Jesus is in hell. See, God doesn't send you to hell, but he allows you to have your free will. If you choose not to accept him, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. You have to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. You have to acknowledge one that I have done wrong. Jesus. This is one of the reasons why Jesus taught us to pray. Father, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Yeah. We do this daily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily. Yeah. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We can go around and thinking that we are so good, but yet if you fail to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you're lost. You are lost. Now understand also too, don't just come and say that I say I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior because I don't want to go to hell. No, it's more than just lip service. If thou shalt believe in thy heart and confess with thy mouth yes, that Jesus is Lord, yes. thou shalt be saved. Yes. You can't just say, I, I believe. See, because I want to let you know this morning that Christ said on the Lord a while ago, move Satan, move out of my way, something along those lines. Satan believed. Yes, yes, yes. Satan believed because he has the knowledge of God. But it's not deep down on the inside. 
It's not that what's on the inside of him. Because what's on the inside of him works out on the outside. So you got to believe deep down in your heart that Jesus is Lord. And let me tell you something. When you believe that Jesus is Lord and you have done wrong, you're not ashamed to acknowledge that I've done wrong. You're ashamed of your act. But you're not ashamed to acknowledge that I've done wrong because you acknowledge that you've done wrong. It's your first step to, to, to moving forward. See, our thing is we like to keep it covered up, keep it hidden. And as long as we keep it covered up and keep it hidden, we'll never grow. Yeah. We'll never grow. What we keep doing, we keep looking over our shoulder, wondering when somebody's going to bring it up. When somebody's going to find us out. But the church of a living God, when you are able to tell yourself, I am a sinner and a wretch under. Lord, I need you. What shall I do? Church of a living God this morning, I want to let you know what we need to do is we need to repent. We need to acknowledge that we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We need to acknowledge that there's no other one except Jesus Christ that can bring me out of what I'm going through. We need to acknowledge that because of, of Jesus dying on the cross, for he died for my sin, for the remission of sin. All oh, of Tremaine, the Hawkins, she did a song and she entitled it, What Shall I Do? What steps should I take? What moves should I make? Oh Lord, what shall I do? Church of the living God, every one of us need to go to God and ask the Lord, what shall we do? Well, not only that, but she said that I'm going to wait. You've got to be willing to wait for an answer from the Lord. Because if you wait on the Lord, you have nothing to lose. Waiting on the Lord, we know that he'll bring us through. Waiting on the Lord knows that there's a blessing for me. Please, Lord, set my soul free. Oh, Lord, I come to you, church of the living God. We've got to take it to God right now. I heard Deacon, Knight, Deacon May say a little while ago that when Deacon Knight broke his leg, he heard that he said his first question was, well, who's going to take care of Margaret? What shall, what shall I do? Church of a living God, and I want to tell you right now, Deacon Knight, don't worry about it this morning. You just take it to God right now. Just wait on the Lord, because God knows all about your situation. He knows all about yours and Dr. Knight's situation, and God will come through. Just wait on the Lord. Church of a living God, just think about a whole community, a whole community of folks that Deacon Knight and uh, uh, Dr. Knight have done. Think about the uh, community of Aidstorm County when Sheriff Knight was driving across the county and now here he, he is. He needs support. If somebody doesn't come to his aid, then we are not who we say we are. We can talk, but there comes a time when we got to show guess who we are. There comes a time when it's test time. We talk a good fight. We talk about love. We talk about being saved. We talk about going to heaven. But when it comes time for test time, when we have to go to the flames of the fire, can we withstand? But I want to let you know, if you can live, if you walk with the Lord, if you know that he is your spirit, if you know that he can do all things, when you know that he can calm your fears, when you know that he can wipe away your tears, when you know that he's, he is Christ, he is God, son, when you know that he can do all things, you know that I'm going to wait because I know he'll come through. Church of a living God. What shall I do? Well, church, this morning, I made up my mind that I'm going to wait on the Lord. I know that I've been through some hard trials and some hard tribulations. But when I think about the fact that God says he's the only begotten Son to die on the cross for my sins. Oh, yes, he died for your sins. Likewise. But I know he died for my sin. And because he died, he sent his son down to the cross. They hung him high. And 
any stress to one. The spirit of the